Today on North O2, we are going to be talking about human evolution and where different species of human lived. This video is part of a collaboration with three other channels. I will talk about this more later in the video. Human evolution is a very complex topic that you may know next to nothing about. Before I go in depth about our past, I will dispel some misconceptions about evolution. Roughly 30% of Americans don't even think evolution is real and think that the idea of humans coming from apes is ridiculous. The reality is that we are apes and we evolved from apes. So let's look at this very famous photo of our evolution. Though it looks like it makes sense, this picture portrays an inaccurate depiction of our evolution. A much better model of our evolution would be this. It isn't perfect because we haven't discovered all human species, but this provides a better understanding of evolution as a whole. It is not linear like the first model, but instead there are different branches of animals. People that are skeptical of evolution always say that if humans are around today, then why are there still chimps? And the answer is that chimps are a separate branch of hominid history and are not our direct ancestors. The last time chimpanzees and humans had a common ancestor was about 7 million years ago. Then the lineages both split off and evolved separately. We didn't evolve from chimps, but rather we evolved from a more ancient common ancestor that was not anatomically a chimpanzee. Another creationist question that is thrown around is the so-called missing link. They claim that there are too many gaps in the hominin family tree for it to be taken seriously. This is wrong for so many reasons. In paleontology, it is known that we will not find every animal of every species. Instead, there will be little gaps until we find the species. For example, Charles Darwin speculated that whales evolved from a land animal many million years ago. He put in the original origin of species that it could have evolved from a bear-like animal that hunted in the water. Though he was not completely right, we later found out that whales did come from land animals and we found multiple transitional species. We don't have every species, but it is now accepted that whales came from wolf-like land animals. It is the same thing with humans. We don't have every species, but we are able to see how our jaws slowly got smaller and our brains got bigger over time. We have enough evidence to form a solid connection that humans are apes and we evolved from apes. Us humans didn't suddenly appear to rule over the earth like a lot of religions say, but rather our ancestors slowly got bigger brains, weaker bodies, smaller jaws, and, a, and most importantly, a greater intelligence. In this video, I will be mainly focusing on the evolution and distribution of the genus Homo. I will not be covering our more ape-like ancestors because the other videos in this playlist cover those. Homo habilis is the oldest species in the genus Homo. The name means handyman because it was thought to be the first hominid species to use stone tools, but this is not disputed. It is an intermediate species between Homo erectus and Australopithecus. There has been scholarly debate over whether it should be classified as an Australopithecine or hominin, but as of now it is still regarded as a hominin species. Though it is a hominin, it was very ape-like. Modern humans have flat faces, but that is something that evolved over millions of years. The jaws of Habilis protruded from the face and were more heavily built. The skull as a whole was more heavily built and had a thick brow. Males on average were about 4 feet tall, and females were smaller in the 3 foot range. They only weighed about 70 pounds, but they were robustly built compared to modern humans. They were likely hairy like chimps, but may have had less hair like the future species. Their brain size was less than half of a modern day human, but twice that of the Australopithecine. They were much smarter than the previous species, but still a lot dumber than humans. This species lived along the eastern side of Africa. Africa truly is the birthplace of mankind and countless other species. These little four feet tall ape men were not dumb compared to modern chimps. Their brains were slightly bigger than a chimp, but we do know that they are a lot more intelligent because of their ability to craft stone tools. Most people do not know, but stone tools are actually very complex. Just to find a stone to make sharp flakes out of can be a challenge. A population of Habilis then evolved into an early form of Homo erectus. These early groups were called Homo ergaster, but have now been considered to just be an early form of erectus. Keep in mind that Habilis coexisted with erectus for possibly as long as 500,000 years. Erectus was much more advanced than Habilis anatomically. Some of the earlier species had a brain volume of about 850 cubic centimeters, but the later surviving species such as the so-called Java Man had brains of 1100 cubic centimeters or more. Homo sapien males on average have a brain volume of 1260 cubic centimeters. Homo sapien females on the other hand have an average brain volume of 1130 cubic centimeters. 
I'm not saying that women are less intelligent than men, but rather the opposite. We all know that women are just as equipped as men for cognitive abilities, and it is insane that these prehistoric ape men had the same sized brain as a female Homo sapien. Though the brain is roughly the same size, modern humans likely have a much more complex and intelligent brains. Now that you know how equipped these animals were, let's talk about their accomplishments as a species. Homo habilis was bound to Africa, but Erectus was so successful that it lived all around the globe. Its territory was vast. Northern China to parts of southern Europe were the most distant ranges from the species' origin in Africa. This animal truly dominated its environment and lived for hundreds of thousands of years. Since every species in the genus Homo is considered to be human, then humans are indeed an old group. As far as two million years ago, these intelligent ape-man roamed our Earth. They must have lived incredible lives of survival and hardship. Along with the incredible range of this species, it was also the first animal known to have used and controlled fire. In East Africa, a site called Chesowanja was found that had fire-hardened clay fragments that have been heated to a temperature of 752 degrees. The Chesowanja and a few other sites show us that they first started to use fire as late as 1.5 million years ago, and were definitely using it by 1.3 million years ago. They were also the first species to make hand axes out of stone. They're axes that were crafted from a large piece of workable stone such as flint. They would have been the pocket knife of their day and would have been used for defense, preparing food, crafting items, war, and countless other things. You can actually buy authentic hand axes made by Homo erectus on the internet for about $300. I don't know about you guys, but I'll definitely buy one of these to put above the fireplace in my future house. How great will it be when somebody asks me why an oddly shaped rock is in a glass case? I will of course reply that a far distant ape man ancestor of ours used the rock right there 1.7 million years ago to butcher a kill in northern France. Whether my statement there is correct is up for debate, but either way an ancient human crafted that tool and used it for his daily activities. Having the opportunity to own that will be amazing to me. Well I went off on a tangent there, but you get the point. They made hand axes and the later surviving species even made stone tipped spears and more complicated devices. This species also took the cake for the oldest drawing or piece of art ever. A 500,000 year old show was collected along with a skull cap in Indonesia during the 1890s. It had strange markings on it that were geometric and must have been carved with a very hard tool. Homo erectus must have carved these shapes with a very sharp stone tool. To me, a Homo sapien English speaker, I see the letter M, but of course this was not the meaning of the carving. Perhaps it was a religious decoration, jewelry, art, or just some random doodle. Whatever it was, it was surely made intentionally hundreds of thousands of years ago by an ancient ancestor of ours. Homo erectus is one of my favorite species of the genus Homo because of its accomplishments and just how long it survived on our planet. It appeared about 2 million years ago and only died out about 70,000 years ago. You may be asking yourself, how did it only go extinct 70,000 years ago if Homo sapiens evolved 350,000 years ago, and the answer is that they coexisted. There are eight species in the genus Homo and countless proposed species and subspecies. They all developed and mixed into Europe and Asia, making a really confusing assortment of human species. Instead of me going in depth on each species, I'll just talk about when and where they appeared and lived on our planet in a timeline-like fashion. I made a video a few months ago where I went in depth on hominin evolution. I do not want to regurgitate all the same information I put in that video, so instead I will help you grasp the topic by giving you a good outline of their expansion around the world. So first, 2.3 million years ago, Homo habilis was living in eastern Africa. Then skip 300,000 years and the first Homo erectus evolved. Fossil evidence tells us that Erectus didn't leave Africa until about 1.8 million years ago and then they dispersed all over the world. They were in all of Africa, southern Europe, and much of Asia. It wasn't just one species at this time, but many species around the world. One of these subspecies likely evolved into the proposed Homo antecessor 1.2 million years ago. Homo antecessor is a proposed species, but it seems to be the transition between Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis. Either way, the next great species was Homo heidelbergensis. This species likely evolved from Homo antecessor somewhere in Europe or the Middle East and then expanded throughout Europe and Africa. It evolved 700,000 years ago and would stick around for a while. 
As of now, 700,000 years ago, Homo erectus is still alive and thriving in many parts of the globe. Homo heidelbergensis lives in East Africa and Southern Europe. It lived alongside Homo erectus. Perhaps they had brutal clashes like seen in the movie A Quest for Fire. This is a great movie, by the way, that I urge you guys all to check out. The next species to evolve were the infamous Neanderthals. Neanderthals, or Neanderthals, first appeared about 430,000 years ago. An interesting thing about them is that their brains were actually larger than modern humans by about 25%. Though their brains were bigger, we know that they were not as smart as humans and most of their brain was used for senses rather than cognitive ability. They were shorter but much stockier than modern humans. This helped them conserve heat in the cold environment that they lived in. They lived all over Europe and parts of Western Asia. A cool thing I like to think about Neanderthals is what if they were still around today? I think that they would dominate combat sports like MMA just because of they're so much thicker and stronger than modern humans. So anyways, the next species to evolve were Homo sapiens. We most likely evolved from an African variety of Homo heidelbergensis 350,000 years ago. These humans were not anatomically modern humans, but they were very close. At this time, Homo sapiens were living in Africa and some other parts of the world, but we did not leave in mass until later. Homo naledi was the next species to evolve in Africa, and it seems it had reverted back into a more primitive form. It looked more like an Australopithecine than a species from the genus Homo. It likely evolved from a primitive group of Homo erectus to become semi-arboreal once again. So now, around 300,000 years ago, there are five main discovered species that are still living around the world. The next species to evolve evolved 150,000 years ago, and that was Homo floresiensis. People like to call them hobbits because they are only three and a half feet tall when full grown. They lived on the island of Flores and likely evolved from a group of Homo erectus that became stranded on the island. So now, 150,000 years ago, there are five distinct species of human on our planet. Like I said earlier, these maps are not all that accurate because we don't know for sure where the groups were, but this is just an estimation. There is also a lot of species that are proposed or fossils waiting to be analyzed that could change this video. Homo luzonensis was discovered in 2007 by a finger bone and took up until a few months ago for it to become recognized as a species. So here's the last map I'll show you. This would be Earth 70,000 years ago. As you can see, Europe and Asia are kind of a mess of different groups of humans and we're not exactly sure where the groups were or what kind of mixtures it was between Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. The species died off as the millennia went by and then about 30,000 years ago there are no other human species besides us Homo sapiens. Yes, every human on Earth today is a Homo sapien, despite what some racists will tell you. Humans have a pretty great diversity between height and different skin color and other things that distinguish us from each other, but we are all still Homo sapiens. Species like Neanderthals and Denisovans still have DNA in our gene pool, but not much. Our superior intelligence and social behavior allowed us to mix with other species and outcompete the others. What amazes me is there are no other species of Homo left. You would think that there would be a tribe out there that survives, but no, just us, Homo sapiens. There's no islands out there with some ape men, there's no Bigfoot in the woods, just Homo sapiens. The field of paleoanthropology is changing every day and I can't wait for what comes next. Hopefully we'll find some late surviving Neanderthal groups somewhere, but I just find this to be unlikely. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about our ancient past. The main message of this video is that humans have been around the world for an inconceivable amount of time and we have been all over the world. I hope you watched the other videos in this playlist because we all worked really hard to make a series about hominids. Besides just this series, I really like the videos these guys make and I work with them for a reason. I really respect their content and I think you guys should check out their channels. As always, check out the subreddit and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Ortho 2. See ya.